Hello, everyone. Hope you're doing well. In today's English lesson, we are going to read a news article about some news that just happened not too long ago, just a few hours ago. So many Americans are talking about this story. And I thought if you are learning English, you might like to do the same. So we will read an article talk about some of the difficult vocabulary and you will be able to see the words right along as we read them. So I think this English lesson will really help your English improve. I do need to say hello to a couple folks who are joining us. Mega, she's from India. It's her birthday tomorrow. So happy birthday. Yulia and Dennis also are here. And it looks like Yulia knows a little bit about the story because she says, I remember I learned about this basketball player from you and then read articles about the situation. So if you have any background knowledge on this player, her name is Brittany Griner. It will help, but it's not necessary because we will read this article together. Yeah, and this news just, Fayez, how's it going? Hope everything is well in Turkey. Yeah, so this news just happened, and I put together some vocabulary words from this article. And what do you say? We get started and read a little bit about what is going on with an American basketball player in Russia. So if there is a moral or a lesson to learn from this story, it is that you should not bring drugs into Russia. <laughs> drugs, like, and the drug we're going to talk about is marijuana, or the young people in the United States might call it weed. So, uh, yeah, don't do that. Letitia's here. Hey, hope everything is going well in Brazil. So let's look at this article. Again, I think if you read the English right along with me, I am a native English speaker, so the pronunciation should be okay for you. You can obviously re-watch this. You can listen to it on the podcast. Shout out to anyone listening on the podcast. But um, I think it will help watching it a couple times or listening a couple times. All right, here is the title. Brittany Griner found guilty in Russian drug trial, sentenced to nine years in prison. Ouch. I got a sentence for you here. When you are sentenced, you find out what your punishment is. So if you have been following the story, you will know that she has already been found guilty of trying to bring drugs into Russia. She was found guilty. She went to trial. A judge said, yeah, you did it. There is enough proof here to find you guilty. Now we just need to figure out what your punishment is. And that's what we say sentencing is in English. Now, if you look at the bottom of the screen, there is a sentence on the screen. It's, it's very different. Sentence can also be a noun or it can be a verb. Like Brittany Griner was sentenced to nine years in prison. All right. So my first question to you in the chat to anyone watching live is do you know what the WNBA is? They are going to mention this in the article and it might be helpful if you know what the WNBA is. While you are writing your answers, one thing I should probably talk about to anyone watching on YouTube is in back you will notice that my background looks a lot different than it has because this 
room that I'm sitting in right now was flooded. One week ago, it was flooded and um, we had to take everything out. The walls, I don't know if I can move this down a little bit. There's no floor, like the floors were taken out. The walls were cut where it got wet. So the background is going to look a little different for a while. And the question was, what is the W? in ba linda how are you i hope everything is going well in russia if you are just joining we are talking about a WNBA basketball player her name is Brittany griner and she is going to be spending some time in russia more time than she thought right, dennis dennis nicely done so oh, oh the w Hang on, the W is a little bit different. So in the United States, we have the NBA, and that is the National Basketball Association. But the W stands for something else. Fayez, yes, it's the women's, the Women's National Basketball Association. And Brittany Griner is a big star in the WNBA. That is the basketball league that women play in. She is one of the biggest stars. I remember watching her play in college. She played for a college called Baylor University. She was really good. And we'll find out in the article, she went over to play a few games in Russia Nothing wrong with that, right? But then she brings in drugs to a country where drugs are illegal. In the United States, I should correct myself, in some of the United States, marijuana is legal. Where I live, in the state of Maine, marijuana is legal. Now, you can't just walk into a store and buy it without a card, but I think that card is pretty easy to get. So it is legal here, but it's not legal in Russia. That is the problem. Dimitri, how are you? All right, so back to the article here. Wait, wait, there was a question about sentencing. Okay. All right, Fayez. What is the phrasal for to sentence? I put away or something? Um, you could, yeah. You could use put away. We could say that Brittany Griner will be put away for nine years. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there is another one. But if you said that in English, people would know what you're talking about. Yeah. How about this also? She's going to be sent away. We might say that. Yeah. Yeah, Brittany Griner is going to be sent away for nine years. Handout. Okay, Dennis says handout. We could use that for the sentencing. Yes. So the two that I just used was talking about her being in prison. But as Dennis is saying, you could say, the judge handed out a nine-year prison sentence to Brittany Griner. Nicely done, Dennis. And your um, your avatar, the one with the plane and the tiger, it was quite a hit. Somebody mentioned that in the comments after the live stream yesterday with Jamie, my wife. So, and I remember Jamie mentioned your plane with the tiger and somebody in the chat. I can't remember who it was. Somebody mentioned that. So, <laughs> love it. Love the uh, tiger on the plane. All right, back to the article here. All we've done is read the title. We have some other, um, other words to talk about here. WNBA star Brittany Griner, who has been detained in Russia for over five months, was found guilty 
on drug charges in a Moscow area court Thursday. She was then sentenced to nine years in prison. So we talked about sentence, how that can be a verb. The judge sentenced her to nine years in prison. The judge handed out a sentence of nine years in prison to Brittany Griner. But maybe you don't know what detained means. Detained. So Brittany Griner has been detained in Russia for nine months, or sorry, for five months, which means she hasn't been able to leave. Detained means you can't leave. So poor Brittany Griner has been detained for five months in Russia. Now, this might happen to one of us if we are traveling to a different country and maybe you have a little problem with your passport. You might be detained at the border, hopefully just for a little bit. Once they work out the problems, that can be a phrasal verb we use there, work out the problems. But here's a sentence you can practice shadowing with if you would like. You might be, be detained at a country's border because of a problem with your passport. You might be detained at a country's border because of a problem with your passport. It's not good. That would not be good, but hopefully you are not detained there for very long. Hey, if you are getting any English out of this lesson, do you mind hitting the like button? Other people will find this lesson and hopefully be helped by it. So in the next paragraph, we're going to talk a little bit about prison but you also might hear the term jail. They're almost the same thing. They are places that look like cages where prisoners are kept. But jail, as you can see on the screen now, is usually for a shorter period of time. There aren't as many guards. Security isn't as tight. So she might have been being detained in a jail while she was waiting for her trial, while she was waiting for her sentencing. But now, because she is probably going to be there for nine years, she's probably going to prison. There's a little difference between jail and prison. I guess if you had your choice, you would want to go to jail. It doesn't seem as bad. Of course, let's, let's not go to either place. The next one. The judge found that Griner had criminal intent and said she was guilty of smuggling and storing illegal drugs. So let's talk about intent. If somebody has intent... It means they want to do it. They meant to do it. Like right now, I have the intention of teaching you English. Notice how I change that to the noun, intention, intent. I have the intent of teaching you English right now. I hope you have the intent to learn English. So intent means you want to do it. You mean to do it. Intention is another thing you might hear. So Brittany Griner, according to the judge, had intent to smuggle and store illegal drugs in Russia. What about smuggling? What does smuggling mean? Smuggling, when you bring illegal things into a country. So you're probably hiding them somewhere and then you're trying to get them across the border. Maybe guns. Maybe you're trying to smuggle guns into a country. Maybe you're trying to smuggle drugs. But they're illegal things you're trying to bring in a country secretly. You're trying to secretly bring in 
something illegal. Now, you might hear smuggle in a not so bad way. I have a sentence for you here. I smuggled candy into the movie theater. Like, is it illegal? Yes. I shouldn't bring in outside candy into the movie theater. But I mean, I don't know about where you live, but the popcorn, the candy at the movie theater is so expensive. So my family and I will sneak in candy sometimes. Don't tell anyone. Yeah. So smuggle, if you want an English phrasal verb, sneak in. That is one that you can use. Any questions from the chat so far? All right, Fayez. So jail is not the place for a felony, is it? No, no. So a felony is a really bad crime. Felons, those are people who commit felonies felonies go to prison. If the crime is not so bad, we call it a misdemeanor. So for a misdemeanor, you might have to go to jail overnight. You may have to pay a fine, but nicely done, Fayez. Yeah. If you commit a felony, you're probably not going to jail. You're probably going to prison. Yeah, Dimitri has some good advice. Brittany Griner probably should have followed this advice here. Before you travel in another country, it would be smart to make a small investigation about local laws and traditions so you will have less problems. Yeah, just because it's legal in your country, I mean, don't think you can do it in another country. Yeah, like Brittany Griner, I'm... I'm definitely not here to defend her. Like if you are going into Russia and that drug is illegal in Russia, don't bring it in. Yeah, you're not going to be able to do your drugs. You'll just have to do them when you get back home. So I don't know. Let me know in the, uh, the comments if you disagree. Th there are a lot of Americans who think Brittany Griner should be let go. Maybe an English phrasal verb there for you. If you don't have to serve your prison sentence, we might say she is let go or she has been let go. But And we will get to President Biden here pretty soon. But see you, Mega. Have a good night. Have a good birthday tomorrow. All right, Dennis, I think there is also some difference between the term jail in the U.S. and in Russia. I wouldn't call a place where a person is kept during the trial a jail. Oh, okay. So in the United States, and luckily this has never happened to me, but we have this saying, you may have heard it, it's called innocent until proven guilty. So for Brittany Griner, she was accused of smuggling drugs. So in the United States, she might have something called bail while she waits for her trial. So the police might find drugs on her and they might say, hey, you are coming to jail to wait for your trial. If it's a misdemeanor, if it isn't a felony, there's a good chance that you can have bail. What bail is, is that you pay money to the court and you are able to leave while you wait for your trial. You don't have to stay in jail. Now, if it's something like murder, um, that's one of the most serious crimes ever. Uh, there might not be bail for that person. They might have to wait in jail for their trial. So but remember, I am not a lawyer. I am just an English teacher. 
but that is how it might work in the United States. So Letitia says, me too. Yes. And I agree with, um, it was Dennis, no, Dimitri that said, you know, just figure out the laws before you go there. Um, in the United States, there are some states that have very different laws. One that comes to mind is motorcycle helmets. In my state, if you are going to ride a motorcycle and you're over 18, you don't need to wear a helmet. I personally would wear a helmet. I probably wouldn't even get on a motorcycle because I don't know how to drive one. But if you go to another state, the law might be that you have to wear a helmet. So it's always best to try to understand what the laws are so you don't get in trouble. Constantine, how are you? Welcome, Letitia. You know, right? We'll sneak in the candy. We'll wait to open the candy until they turn the lights off. We'll save some money. We will save some money. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what this is, Elena. As the ancients said, Duralex said, Lex. I don't know what that means. Dura. I know Dura means hard in Italian, right? I think. Um, so we we all we have a saying that in English that goes something like this. If you can't do the time, don't do the crime. If you can't do the time, don't do the crime. So if you're not willing to take the punishment, don't do that thing. Right. Back to the article. What is going on here with Brittany Griner? Right at the top there. Griner, a 31-year-old Houston native who plays professional basketball for the Phoenix Mercury, was detained on February 17th at, hang on, I've been practicing how to say this. Let me see. Shemitiva. Shemitiva. International Airport. I hope that was right. I had uh, some practice practice with pronunciation. Shemitiva. And then that's, that city is Kimki. Oh, please. If you speak Russian... Tell me how badly did I do on that? All right, so that's the airport that's in in near Russia. I mean, sorry, near Moscow. As she returned to Russia to play during the WNBA's off season. Okay, we're on the next page now. After she was accused of having vape cartridges containing hashish oil, which is illegal in the country. So uh, a big problem we have in the United States with younger people, like my students are 13 and 14 and some of them vape, which is uh, probably worse than cigarettes, right? Because it just pushes all of this stuff into your lungs. I don't know how it works. I don't want to know how it works, but it seems pretty bad. Ah, Elena, thank you. The law is harsh, but it's the law. Yeah, perfect. It wasn't like the law was a secret, right? They didn't surprise her like, oh, guess what? Hey, because you're an American, yeah, it's illegal to do drugs. Uh, we surprised you. Huh? No, it's the law. Good call. All right, phew. Constantine says, totally fine. Hopefully it didn't sound too badly for an American trying to pronounce a Russian airport. Sounds cool though. Let me say it one more time. Let me practice here. Shemitiva. I like it. I like it. I wish uh, I wish I knew Russian. Privet. Privet. That's about all I know. 
Pakal. Pakal. Something like that. Uh, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. I didn't even plan this. Um, my my uh, computer is uh, propped up on some books. And look at this is one book right here. Oh, Yelena. Yelena gave this to me for Christmas. Russian for foreigners. I, ha I have been studying a little bit of Russian. Dobry, dobry utra. Dobry utra. Right? Is that good morning, I think? Kaktila? Kaktila? All right. I need some more practice. All right. Back to the article. Yeah, is it is it is, right? Casey says it's all chemical things. It's worse than a cigarette. That's all I know. Yeah, so I would say as a teacher, as a father, don't do either one. Cigarettes are bad. Drugs are bad. Vaping seems really bad. All right. Let's see. Let's bring this article up here. A few more sentences, a few more words, hopefully improving your English. The two-time Olympic gold medalist who appeared in court Thursday for the final hearing in her trial was facing up to 10 years in prison although nine and a half years was the maximum sentence with time served. Griner has a right to appeal. A couple things in that paragraph we should talk about. The first one is appeal. Now, if you're watching, you should see on the screen, it says appeal you say you don't like the decision. So Brittany Griner can appeal her sentence. The judge sentenced her to 10 years, nine and a half time served. We'll talk about that term in a minute. And she could appeal. She might say, oh, no, you got it wrong. No, this is really what happened. Sometimes um, we would call them plaintiffs. Sometimes plaintiffs can win on appeal, but it's rare. And I'm thinking she's not going to get out of that prison sentence. Get out. She will probably have to serve it. Whoops. There is a typo there. It should be your appeal may be denied. Your appeal may be denied. If it's denied, then they say, too bad, too sad. You have to go to jail still. Now, let's talk about this time served thing. Because remember, she was detained all the way back in February. That's about six months ago. So the nine and a half years is because she has already been detained for about six months, timed, time served. So she was already in jail for about six months. So she didn't have to serve an additional six months. Her sentence was 10 years. She had already been in there for six months. So that's why her sentence is nine and a half years. Hopefully that makes sense. Just checking the chat here. Sounds great. Thank you. Oh, the KGB will recruit me soon. All right. Da. All right. Maybe I can, maybe I can work for the KGB. Uh, are they still, are they still around? What is it that it's now something else? Let's see. I don't know. But yeah, um, sign me up. I'm, I'm there. Let's go. Uh, the next one. Make this a little bigger here. Get rid of that banner. Oh, dear. Um, if I'm going to work for the KGB, I am going to have to say the lawyers' names correctly. And you can see it's written there as attorneys. Attorneys, lawyers, they're basically the same thing. But let me move this to the top and I will read this. Griner's attorneys 
Marina Bologovina. It's probably wrong, sorry. And Alexander Boykov told reporters outside of the courtroom in Moscow on Thursday that they plan to file an appeal. She's upset, very upset, very stressed. Bogovina said of Griner, she can hardly talk, honestly. So it's difficult time for her. And so because they are maybe not native English speakers, they did leave out an A there. So she can hardly talk, honestly. So it's a difficult time for her. But it's all right. Hey, that's pretty good English though, right? U.S. President Joe Biden slammed Russia. So here, the slamming, it means he's kind of saying like they did bad things. Like maybe you think I'm a horrible English teacher. And if you're slamming me, you might say, oh, Brent, you don't watch that guy on YouTube. He's awful. That would be slamming me. So President Biden is slamming Russia for being so mean to Brittany Griner. Where's President Biden? What's he saying here? Um, I'll read that again. U.S. President Joe Biden slammed Russia in a statement on Thursday morning following Griner's sentencing and called on Russia to release her immediately. You might know what that word immediately means in English. It's another way to say right now, immediately, right now. Okay. So the KGB is now the FSB. Okay. Both things I should probably be scared of, right? Are they are they listening to me now? Are they listening to me now? Hey, got a little something for you here while I take a drink of water. If this lesson is helping your English improve, don't forget to tap that like button and share it with a friend who's learning English. Yeah, so that guy, uh, he did a little... Uh, voice over for me and just reminding you, hey, to like this lesson. And if you have a friend who's learning English, share it with them. It might help them. If it, oh, Harry from Indonesia is here. How are you? Hello, Brent. Just woke up from sleeping. I think it's in the middle of the night there, right? And check what is going on here. Probably I will continue sleeping. Yes, you should. You can always watch on replay. See everyone. Have a good one. Good night. Yeah. Harry, good night. Have a good night. I'm guilty of that sometimes. I'm sleeping. I wake up, you know, maybe get a snack, maybe use the bathroom. Um, then check my phone. Oh, that is the kiss of death. You should not do that. If you check your phone when you're trying to go back to sleep, that means you will probably be awake for another hour. <laughs> so, uh, hello, hello. Hope you're doing well. I don't know if I dare say your name, but you did pop up on my subscriber list as someone who has a lot of subscribers. I think you have like thousands of subscribers. So welcome, welcome. How are you? All right, the next sentence here, unless there's something else we should talk about. No, escalated. We are going to get to escalated in the next one. Could be a difficult term for English learners. All right, this is more Joe Biden talking. Today, American citizen Brittany Griner received a prison sentence that is one more reminder of what the world already knew. Russia is wrongfully detaining Brittany, Biden said. Wrongfully detaining Brittany. So wrongfully, it's just an adverb. It's describing a verb. But if you know what wrong means, wrongfully, that is a word you can use quite often. If something is being done in a bad way, um, 
but it's usually for something really formal. Um, let's say I'll use myself as an example. And I am an English teacher at a school. Um, so let's say that my principal fired me. He said, uh, you're a horrible teacher. Get out of here. And I could say, hey, I was wrongfully fired. I'm a good teacher. I shouldn't be fired. My principal can't fire me, by the way. Oh. He could, he could, it's hard to fire an American teacher. Some of us, some, some of us should probably be fired, but it's very hard to, that's another, that's another um, lesson altogether. But yeah, it's very hard. If a teacher has tenure, which I do, you get tenure after you have been at a school for three years, I think it's really hard to get rid of that teacher. It's really hard to fire them. It's a good thing and a bad thing though, I think. All right. Yeah. Do we, do we need to talk about escalating is my next note? And I think it is in the next paragraph here. Is escalating there? Calls to free grinder escalated. There that is. I thought that might be a difficult verb if you're learning English. Calls to free Griner escalated following the release of U.S. Marine veteran Trevor Reed in April, who was freed from a Russian prison as part of a prisoner exchange. So a prisoner exchange means if Russia had an American prisoner, the United States probably had a Russian prisoner and then they just swapped. So they each got to go back to their own country, prisoner exchange. But let's talk about escalated. Escalated means something gets bigger or more intense. And if you want an English phrasal verb for that, ramps up. That might be one, ramps up. All right, rain is on my mind because the last time it rained really hard, my house flooded. So I wrote an example sentence about rain here. The rain escalated as the storm moved through. So it got more intense. It, the, it started to rain harder. And let's see if I can do this here. I think I can. I would love to show you a picture of an escalator just in case you don't know what that is. And I think it might help. So that is a picture or a couple pictures of escalators. And you can see they go up. They're like moving stairs that go up. They also go down but that doesn't really help with the definition here. So anytime you hear escalate, think gets bigger, goes up, gets more, something like that. So the rain escalated as the storm moved through. How's that sound? Does that help? Now I need to share my other screen here. It's not so easy. got it there it is wait hang on there it is so um the next paragraph and i will move it up here it's unacceptable and i call on russia to release her immediately so she can be with her wife loved ones friends and teammates biden wrote in the statement my administration will continue to work tirelessly and pursue every possible avenue to bring Brittany and Paul Whalen home safely as soon as possible. All right, so Paul Whalen is another person apparently being held in Russia. I don't know. Maybe President Biden will try to uh, bring both of them home. I'm not sure. All right. Brittany is now a bargaining chip in the hands of an authoritarian regime. Ooh, very good English. Hey, those are Elena's words, not mine. I'm trying to stay out of the politics. 
In fact, the, um, the article goes on to get a little political talking about the money that men make for playing basketball in the United States versus the amount of money women make in the United States for playing basketball. And that's just something I didn't want to get into. But I hope this 40-minute English lesson helped you. If you would like to read the article, I will put the uh, link to this article in the description so you can find it and practice reading it on your own. And of course, if you have any questions about the article, just leave them right in the comments and I will answer them as soon as possible. If you're listening to the podcast, hey, don't forget, write a, a five-star review if you really like this and follow me on Instagram. Um, speak English with this guy. It's really hard to ask questions on a podcast. But if you follow me on Instagram, you can ask a question there. Any final questions here? All right. Um, escalate and why can't I say that word? Evolate. Evolate. Is that, is that, um, I'm trying, I'm thinking of alleviate. How do you spell that, right? Alleviate. Oh, let me see. Um, I don't think those can be interchangeable. Because I would love to hear that. Um, I would love to hear that said. I believe it's alleviate. Let me see. Elevate. Oh, elevate, elevate, elevate. Um, trying to think of a sentence here. Um, so let's talk about the connotations for both of those words. Um, escalate means usually something gets worse. Um, if you elevate something, it's usually it gets better. We also have another word that I was getting confused with. And that is alleviate. Maybe I need to do an English lesson on those three words. They can be very confusing. So um, let's say maybe a movie elevates a star, a movie star. So because they did such a good job in that movie, their career um, was elevated. It means to get higher. So I would say those two words be careful. Don't use them interchangeably. But right now I'm going to take a picture of your comment. And I think I'm going to make that into a lesson where I can pair three different words that sound almost the same. They are almost the same definition, but not. Alleviate alleviate means to take the burden off of something like to make something easier. So maybe also elevation. They're all so, so close. So elevation is how high something is like a mountain. The mountains elevation was 5,000 feet. Constantine, that's, that's, going to be an English lesson somewhere, either on this channel or on the main channel. Speak English with this guy. Great question. Great question. Escalate can be used at work as well. When you escalate something further, hand over something to a higher level decision-making, for instance. Yeah. And um, excavate. Oh my gosh, that's another word that's almost the same. Sometimes excavate is used at work. It means like to dig something. Um, a fight could escalate. Starts off small, and the argument or the fight gets worse. It gets escalated. Good, good call, Dennis. Um, Brent, you mentioned the word intend. So my question is, no pun intended, and no hard feelings. 
uh, are used interchangeably. Oh, okay. Okay. So, okay. So, um, no, no pun intended. Um, they cannot be used interchangeably, man. Maybe I should take a, no. Um, how would you use like no pun intended? Um, okay. Uh, my basement was flooded. Okay. You may know that. I think you do. Amina, how's it going? Look at the new, the new basement. It has fewer things in here. All right. So let's talk about no pun intended. All right. So as you know, my basement was flooded. Okay. And I put up a video and so many people were saying nice things to me in the comments. They're like, stay strong. Hey, at least your family's safe. So the comment, the, the comment section was flooded with people saying nice things, no pun intended. So you could use the word flooded as in like a lot of things. Like the, the comment section was flooded with nice people. No pun intended. You know, you shouldn't say probably flooded that way if somebody's house was just flooded. I hope that example helps. Uh, no hard feelings though. Well, that's a little tricky. Um, yeah, let's go back to my principal firing me, you know, maybe there just wasn't enough money to pay me. He might say, Hey, I got to fire you, but, uh, no hard feelings. Okay. It's just another way to say, Hey, don't be mad at me. I, you know, I, I didn't want to do this. I didn't mean to do this. So I hope that, I hope that helps. Maybe escalate goes from scale and elevate goes from level, Dimitri. It could be, could be. Yeah. Hmm. English, you got to love it. So different. I mean, so different, but like so close. Those words right there. All right. Uh-oh, Turkish. The dictionary says that they have the same meaning but it was a Turkish English dictionary. So you're talking about no pun intended and no hard feelings. It's not exactly the same. No, um, we would, I would say that no pun intended is usually meant to be kind of funny. No hard feelings is definitely more like anger or sadness or something. So yeah, please, I know that you can't use them interchangeably. Tough stuff. All right. I hope you've enjoyed this English lesson, even though my, my background isn't quite the same. But thank you all for joining. It's always great to see you in here. Um, Dennis, Amina, Constantine, Dimitri, Fayez, Yulia. I don't know if she is still here. Happy birthday, Mega. Harry, go back to sleep. Letitia, you still here? Brazil? Is Brazil still in the house? All right. Kaylin. Was that? I, I didn't even see this comment. What happened? Oh, hey. <laughs> that was definitely getting political. That he this person might be a, an American woke. That is a that's a good term to use to to trigger term woke. Nice. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to touch that one, but thanks for the comment. This is good. All right. I think we're done here. Leticia is here. Okay. And Yuli is still here. Hey, awesome. Thank you so much. I hope your English is better because of this lesson. And uh, check out the other channel, Speak English with this guy. I'll be going live with more lessons Saturday, Sunday, I think. All right, Yulia. Thank you very much for the great lesson. I learned a lot of new words. Awesome. Thank you so much. Adios, amigos.